Okay, uh, down to the last step here. I ended up adding a small amount of red mahogany, uh, uh, Color Tones red mahogany, to their uh, original cherry red that I started with to get a better color balance. And it's looking pretty good side by side with this other pipe. Disregard the shine. The depth of color is already vastly superior to uh, that flamingo pink business that was going on before. But there's a certain 3D effect and a depth that's missing here. And we're going to address that in the same way that shells are addressed. This finish was actually originally a red shell. They called it the, the root uh, root bark, I think, was the first proposed name for it, and they changed their mind. But the process used to apply it in the early days, in the intent of the company, was to use the same process that they did for the shells, which is layered. And uh, they ended up doing the, the, the quick and easy method, as I've already uh, explained a few times, just as a cost-saving measure. But we're going back to the uh, original intent and going to make this using the same process that uh, I use for the shell. And let's see, this, this is, okay, I've already talked about this on the first set of videos I ever made, the uh, 6475 Dunhill at Cherrywood. And a lot of people find this appalling or surprising until they think about it. These shoe creams, the, the high-end ones now, not the paste in a can, that's a whole different animal. But the very high end, and this is Johnston and Murphy, is really nothing more than the same pigments that go into liquid stains that are held in a liquid suspension. This stuff is held in a paste suspension. This is leather dye, by the way. All of this stuff that people that use, the pipe makers use, is Phoebing's leather dye. And the same leather dye is what goes into this. They just mix it into a paste uh, carrier form. So it's there's nothing uh, wrong, so to speak, uh, doing this. And uh, you end up with the de desired result with uh, uh, by unconventional means, maybe, but we're after a, a certain look. And the only way I found is to do it with these cream-based, to get the layered shell effect is using these cream-based stains. So this guy here is a little bit bright, and this one's a little deeper. It's got some dark spots in the low areas where this is a little more bland. It looks a little more three-dimensional. Okay, this stuff... You can get it in black and tan and brown and you name it. There is a color in the leather world called cordovan. And it is shockingly close to that color right there. And all we're going to do is put a dab of it on a uh, toothbrush and smear it around and as soon as you've done a patch of it wipe it and then it'll stay and continue to stain so to speak the low spots which is what you want because we're going to get the uh, the high peaks to kind of glow here in a minute with a, a final step but you have to get the shading into the low areas. And the way to do that is what you're seeing me do right here. Put on this shoe cream, wipe it off the top, and let it do its thing in the low areas. And you'll be a happy guy. Or girl. There's a few women that do this. I've been made to understand. I know one pipe maker is a young lady and she's doing really well here in Kansas City, in fact. So 
So we made it all the way around the bowl. And do the shank. And I accelerate the drying of stains when I use them like when I'm doing jobs like this by uh, holding it holding the uh, stummel over a heat gun the paint stripper style heat gun that you can bend stems with works really well as an accelerated dryer for uh, finishing stains now this particular pipe is unusual in that you will not encounter uh, reds very often in the pipe world. It's for good reason. Red in general, in the pigment sense, in the art world is a pain in the ass whenever it's used, why ever it's used, car finishes, fabrics, the back in the old days painting oil portraits and stuff red has always been agony there's it fades it transfers it uh is it's just something about the pigments in nature the uh, the physics of it in some way i don't understand but there are no red dyes or stains or paints in the world that aren't a complete pain in the butt to deal with. So you won't be using reds very often in uh, uh, pipe work, but when you do, now you know uh, some tricks. So, okay, I'm going to uh, shut off the camera and dry this thoroughly and then hit the high spots using a hard wheel at a very low RPM to try to get the uh, the high spots to come out and we'll see what we've got. I think we're going to be fairly happy with it. I might end up doing the same thing you just saw me do with a bit of brown to get still more contrast. It depends on what I see after this next uh, shine up. But uh, that might be just about it. Uh, I'll shut off the camera and <clears throat> do what I just described. Be back in a minute. 